Hi and welcome, and welcome on, on Money, Money, Money Network. Network, with all we can see pretty well, how Bitcoin's evolving around the world, and how it's skyrocketed in the last period. Hello, From this up, video everybody? we can understand how Bitcoin will evolve in India, that it's an untapped network. market, and also you can hear other important early, ideas, and facts that efforts. might be helpful for you Today in the next future. You can find you Crypto Somniac channel link on the description below. I wish you all the best to you and your family and a prosperous financial year in 2018. If you liked the video, or you think that it's useful for you or others, please get involved with a share, like and comment or dislike. Thanks. Hello, what's up everybody? This is your host, Sam Capizzi here at Crypto Somniac to bring you everything crypto related, where the rich never sleep. Today I present to you a special episode brought to you by my co-founder, Snakebot. He's going to be talking about blockchain and Bitcoin in India, the place that the Beatles, Steve Jobs, and Buddha went for enlightenment. So without further ado, I'll give the reins over to him. Hey guys, today we're talking about Bitcoin in India and how it's an untapped market and could be a next big player in the game. So why is India an untapped market? Well, first of all, we see it's sixth in the GDP as of 2017. And the World Bank estimates it'll be number four by 2022. So that's United States, China, Japan, and then India at 2022 is estimated to be the fourth largest player in the world economy. So why is India still an untapped market? Well, just looking at the smartphone users, China, with a population of 1.4 billion people, has around 51% penetration, while India, not far behind, has about 1.35 billion people at 22.4% penetration. So you can see that there's a lot more room for growth for the smartphone user community, especially as things get cheaper and cheaper, um, as things get uh, cheaper and cheaper like Android phones and uh, obviously not iPhones, but uh, uh, Windows phones. And uh, another, a lot of other uh, open source platforms for cell phones. So you can see, whoop, it's 50, 550 million users by 2020. That's almost a 250 more million people by 2020 that will have smartphone users. India's unbanked. So right now, India has a massive, massive percentage of unbanked citizens per capita. If you look at the United States has 88%, China has 63.8%, and India is almost in the bottom tier where only 35.2% of adults have bank accounts. India's population as of November in 2016 of unbanked people is 167 million people. Now, I just want you guys to grasp the amount of people that is. It's almost half the population in the United States, unbanked. If India was, if, in, if India's unbanked were a country, it would be the sixth largest country in the world. Massive amount of population that uh, Bitcoin could impact positively. Some more additional stats. Second largest English speaking population after the United States, uh, after the United States and uh, I may be a little bit biased here, but uh, I think English is the, the language of money. Uh, a, a lot of international business is done in English. Uh, it has the fastest growing online population due to the sheer size of um, people really getting online and uh, people that don't have access to computers or smartphones right now. And has a large Facebook population. How large? India is number one in 2017. So 241 million users India just beat out United States in 2017. So I'm not going to bore you about what Bitcoin is and the technology behind it because let's face it, if you're here, you probably know what Bitcoin is. But for those of you that don't know, it's a digital currency. It's easily paid uh, for services with a smartphone. And these paper wallets are unhackable. How, how are they unhackable? Well, if you own your private key, you own your money. If you own your... So it's completely open source so you can see any money being transferred in real time. So there's block explorers out there where you could see that 
person A and person B, that person B has received the money from person A. And uh, and one of some uh, more statistics about India is only 3% of Indians pay taxes. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's really hard since there's no social security number or real hard government in place that uh, to collect taxes. So only 3% of people actually pay taxes in India. And uh, in early 2017, black money was a huge thing uh, where they, uh, a lot of people weren't paying their taxes. And so the government decided to ban 1,000 rupee and 500 rupee notes. So uh, the largest denomination of rupees, they actually banned. Uh, and things like Monero, uh, Verge, uh, Zcash, and Dash, they're completely untraceable. I know I'm not I'm not advocating uh, to use untraceable money for illegal activities or anything, but I am saying if you don't want anyone looking, uh, there's a lot of technology in the blockchain area, in the blockchain space rather, uh, that uh, is untraceable. So is it a digital gold? So India's love for gold. Uh, this is a, a, probably one of the most important statistics I want to talk about is um, Indian housewives own 11% of the world's mined gold, mined gold. So this came from a Forbes article, or I think it's a, a Newsweek article, actually. And uh, it actually means private citizens own 11% of the world's mined gold. Now, that's a massive amount of gold, guys. An estimated 600 to 800 billion dollars of private citizen gold. So Indian housewives own four times more gold than Fort Knox. So that's more than the United States, Switzerland, Germany, and the International Monetary Fund reserves combined. So I don't know how to stress this even more, but that's a massive amount of gold. Uh, four times more than uh, Fort Knox. Like that just blows me away. So why do Indians love gold? Well, first of all, it's a great investment. Uh, you know, a lot of people are really skeptical about uh, the government really um, inflating these prices of the rupee or the dollar or the euro. And gold really ha has a sort of backing there that it has a high demand and there's limited supply. And cultural reasons. So um, I know during a lot of marriages, a lot of religious ceremonies, uh, there's a, a lot of gold being gifted. And uh, unlike Western religions, uh, monotheistic religions, uh, polytheistic religions really idolize their gods. So um, there will be, uh, you know, idols or statues of gods in gold or silver that people really prefer to have in their home. And lastly, there is a family heirloom factor. Uh, I know in my in my family um, we have gold going back uh, or gold necklaces going back. Um, Around uh, three or four generations, my great grandparents is uh, a golden necklace, and uh, you know that really solidifies how much India really loves gold. And of course, this is a funny meme uh, about a uh, pretty popular meme actually about this guy in India to attract suitors. He actually created a gold shirt. <laughs> so is Bitcoin a digital gold? So why is it a digital gold? Uh, Cap supply of 21 million coins, so no more Bitcoin can actually be mined uh, at all after 21 million coins. And it's a store of value that really appreciates over time as blockchain and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general get more and more popular, uh, they increase in price. As more people flood the market, right now we're at a market cap of around 130 billion. And that's nothing compared to the total gold market or the total um, stock market, which is trillions of dollars. Price is controlled by supply and demand and not by corrupt governments. So this isn't like a fiat um, based system where you could just keep printing money. Uh, this actually uh, really you know, helps investors really have a peace of mind saying, hey, uh, no more gold is actually, I mean, no more Bitcoin is actually going to be mined or, um, or, uh, or really printed like fiat. So here's a chart as of uh, post date, as of recording. Uh, Bitcoin is at thirty nine hundred dollars, while gold is steady at around thirteen hundred dollars. And this is a chart going back to two thousand twelve, around September two thousand twelve. You can see uh, the gold price, you know, slowly chugging along. Uh, it doesn't increase or decrease in value. Uh, really keeps uh, people's peace of mind because you know gold's always in supply and demand. You know, it's been like that from the beginning of time. 
And you can see Bitcoin in 2012 was, uh, you know, close to a dollar. And uh, now it's almost triple the value of gold. Regulations in India. So in 2013, uh, the Reserve Bank of India warned against using Bitcoin. And right now, they in the Ministry of Finance actually has a team uh, researching blockchain technology and Bitcoin and see what they could do or how to proceed with this technology. Uh, and right now, rupee to Bitcoin exchanges require a permanent account number or a PAN number or an Aadhaar number to access sites like Unicoin, ZepPay, Coin Secure and Coinbase. So these four are really um, the largest exchanges from fiat to Bitcoin. Regulations are slow, uh, but uh, I think uh, their really big focus is money laundering and black money, which again uh, I explained earlier in the video was uh, money that wasn't being taxed and people pretty much spending and paying under the, being paid under the table. However. Bitcoin cannot be shut down or stopped. You would literally have to shut down the internet to stop Bitcoin. If you put Bitcoin in a private wallet uh, and off the any sort of exchange, only you can access your Bitcoin. No governments, uh, uh, no, no hackers, nobody could really access your Bitcoin. Unless, of course, they hacked your computer. But uh, in a, a fundamental standpoint, Bitcoin is essentially unhackable. So current Bitcoin projects in India. Uh, I think you saw our video earlier about Bit India. It's a uh, rupee to, uh, to uh, sorry, fiat to BTC, Ether, and LTC and Ripple exchange and wallet. Uh, and it's also decentralized. And what they're truly trying to push is um, this uh, knowledge and blockchain space into India, which is relatively untapped. Uh, as you can see, um, only about 0.5% of people actually have uh, uh, knowledge about Bitcoin in India. And uh, Sahil and Somil Kohli, they're actually the founders and co-founders of uh, a, a, a company called AppLancer. AppLancer creates apps and a uh, pretty successful company. And of course, the titan, the guru, John McAfee himself. Uh, as a partner and advisor, I think it has a really big prospect and uh, I'm really looking forward to this project. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe us on YouTube. Uh, we have a Facebook group with over 8,000 members sharing cryptocurrency content all the time. Uh, we have a SoundCloud full of podcasts just like this one. Uh, this will be transferred into a podcast. So if you're on the road or uh, you know, you can't access uh, a computer. It, it really helps your latency and uh, your data usage. So go check out our podcast on SoundCloud. We have set more appointments, which are one-on-one -on -one appointments um, for me and Sam. We, uh, you can really pick our brain, uh, ask us anything, either if you want to set up a wallet or um, see what we're invested into. You can really ask us there. Uh, we have a Patreon, which is a Moon Lounge. Um, a Patreon, which is the Moon Lounge. Uh, <laughs> where we disclose all of our uh, information. Uh, we're on it 24 seven, pretty much. Uh, all of our trades are disclosed right then and there. And of course, the Udemy course, uh, which is only $10 and it's a really good starting place for anything cryptocurrency related. Uh, and uh, next week, we'll actually have a Hindi translation of this video. So be sure to check that out if you are, uh, uh, I won't be doing it because I, I don't know Hindi that well, but um, be sure to check us out. Uh, thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, this is Snay at CryptoSymniac. And remember, stay a CryptoSymniac because the rich never sleep.